Hello and welcome to another AZ. I keep. I always fuck up the goddamn intro to this goddamn thing. Welcome to Do another. Do you want someone else the intro? No, no, I got it. Welcome to the Lava Falls AZ podcast. We are here again. Our last episode got cancelled. It will be uploaded at some point. It's super long and I have to edit it and blah blah blah. But, uh, yeah, I guess this is technically the fifth episode, uh, we don't have a huge group with us today, it's just a small little, little group, so, uh, oh, anyway, roll call, Emma, hey, Jordan, what's up, fools, and Mark, greetings, humans, and me, <laughs> the lonely bug man. That never shuts up about how lonely he is. Uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Something uh, about it. What? Yeah, uh, <laughs> he came up to me uh, a couple days ago. He was, he, he had his fists clenched, and he said, "He said, Mark, I, I can't help but feel Kafka esque." What the fuck? What? And then he, uh, he continued to make uh, Naruto uh, numb AMV. <laughs> Oh my god, feel, Mark. That makes me feel... That, that comment made me feel really old right now. <laughs> I don't really oh, understand. Wow. All I heard was Naruto AMVs with Linkin oh, Park. Uh, he's got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like fucking... It was like Naruto finding someone and then you just hear Linkin Park in the background. Oh god, I remember yeah. those. Become, so it's like Naruto versus Sasuke. Like, it's always that. Yeah. I'm drawing my waifu if she was in the scene with Scarface, where Scarface is, uh, he kills, um, oh fuck, what's that guy's name? I call him Dr. Manning, because he has a mustache. Don Shido? No, it's when, it's when Scarface is in his blue suit, and he's, his arm's broken, and he kill uh, he doesn't even kill the guy. Oh, he's not... Yeah, his original boss. I forgot his name, but I know what you're talking. What's you're talking about? I know about. what you're talking about now. Yeah, is his I name don't. is his name Frank? Frankie? Yeah, I think his name. Was, yeah, I think his name was Frank. It was Frank the Castle. Yeah, yeah and he's on his seat. It's like, oh please, Tony, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's like, don't kill me, don't kill me. He's like, I won't kill you. And then he's like, smoke him and or then, some shit to the other guy. Yeah, that was his friend Manny who killed uh, killed Frank right there for him. I like the part where he's like, he looks at the other guy. He's like, "Hey, you need a job." <laughs> uh, I like the part where Frank puts on the black suit with the belt and a skull on his shirt, and he goes, "I'm Frank Castle now." <laughs> okay, so my favorite scene from Scarface, like the one that lives rent free in my head, is where Tony's in his uh, jacuzzi watching TV. And as, you know, like, Michelle Pfeiffer's, like, completely bitching to him about how he says fuck a lot. Oh, yeah. And, uh, cool. he's just like, he's like, oh, look at the pelican, Manny. Go on, pelicans. And it's just a bunch of flamingos on TV. <laughs> it's just like, that fucking line lives rent-free in my head. Like, you do an x-ray of my brain, like, those, like, the ones in the cartoons, like, where, um, you know, it's like that, that Simpsons, you remember in the Simpsons movie? Where Marge is like nagging Homer about that uh, giant Jesus. silo of pig waste he has, and it's and, uh, a little monkey. Just, like, yeah, the monkey says so, like clink 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 like cl like clinging the uh, symbols together. I know uh, that your mind someone... sometimes seems to wander. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like that. If, you, if it was like that and you saw what's inside my head, it'd be that scene. It would be that scene in particular. <laughs> And then, and then, the, and then, Tony yeah, throws my favorite the, is. Yeah, points at points at Marge. <laughs> Why the ladies here? She's here with chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. I want chicken I'm gonna, nuggets. I'm chicken. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. She dressed like Marie Antoinette the other night, last night. And, who? Uh, who? Oh, oh, uh, oh boy. Who? Oh. Marie uh, Antoinette. Yeah, Marie Marie Antoinette. I was like, uh, boy, 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 boy uh, a wooga. Uh, I mean, wait, up. who did she dress up as? Marie Antoinette, one second, she's here. Do, 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 do
Um, and if I ever seen Jay the Silent Bob, this is hard. Anyone? What? Anyone ever seen Jay the Silent Bob? James Silent Bob? You know the stoner buddy duo from the '90s that Kevin Smith wrote? I don't think so. You you don't know who Kevin Smith is? No, you know, I, clerks, no. Wall rats. I, I don't really know famous people at all. I don't either. What's that, Emma? I do not know famous people either. I still haven't heard of you know Jay and Silent Bob. Okay. Um, so basically, they're a stoner duo comedy from the '90s that first appeared in the uh, first one of the first indie films that Kevin Smith wrote and directed called Clerks. But it's kind of like you know, like there's no set plot. It's just you know, it's just it's kind of like okay. So what it's well loved for, known for, is its dialogue. You know, and it's kind of it's kind of like Pulp Fiction where it's split up into different chapters, except it's not in you know a weird order like Pulp Fiction. You know, it's in chronological order, kind of. But, you know, basically, you know, it revolves around a guy, you know, who works at a, you know, at a fucking gas station. You know, and he, you see him just deal with his daily struggles, some of his friends. And then one of the, uh, weird out moments is when we meet the stoner duo, Jay and Silent Bob. And Jay is played by one Jason Muse, and Silent Bob is played by Kevin Smith. And basically the whole gimmick is that Silent Bob's really quiet up until like a certain moment in the movie that he's in. Because they appear in a bunch of different Kevin Smith movies with the same character, character but there's a, really a certain moment where he just starts talking and giving advice or having a big brain moment, basically. And Jay is just the uh, obnoxiously loud, you know, stoner dude with a Brooklyn accent. You know, like stereotypical Brooklyn like where he says use guys you know and it's just if you have not seen any of the Kevin Smith movies you can go watch them when you get a chance if you find them they're really good movies hmm. you know but um yeah so there's a bunch of different Kevin Smith movies with you know Jay and Silent Bob like I said there's Clerks Clerks 2 the Mallrats films Chasing Amy and of course the Jay and Silent Bob movies um Jay and Silent Bob even got their own animated movie, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was kind of like a crowdfunded thing, so it's pretty low budget. It's kind of a low budget animated film, but um, it has uh, what's her name? That voice actress, um, the very famous one who played uh, Timmy Turner. What was her name? Tara Strong. I have no uh, idea, but I know who you're talking. Tara Strong. About. Tara Strong, yeah, it was Tara Strong. So, in one of the Jay and Silent Bob movies, the first one, basically the plot is they have to go to Hollywood to stop a filming of a movie based on their superhero counterparts that one of the characters in the Jay and Silent Bob, the Kevin Smith movie universe, wrote based on them. Basically, they're known as a superhero duo, duo called Blunt Man and Chronic. And um, they gave the rights to uh, Miramax, which is funny because Miramax produces the Kevin Smith movies. And um, they're trying to stop it because they apparently aren't getting any money from it because it's based on their likeness. And uh, when they arrive on the movie set in disguise as their characters, uh, there's a scene that's being fight, a fight scene between them and Mark Hamill as a villain named Cockknocker. Whereas him in a weird getup and a giant fist hand, fist glove. And uh, as the name implies, he will very aggressively punch you in the balls. And uh, there's a big Star Wars reference. You know, <laughs> and apparently his character shows up in the animated Jane Silent Bob movie. But they couldn't get Mark Hamill in to do, redo it. So they got Tara Strong. Instead, he is, she does like a really, really high-pitched version of his character, you know, like actual Tara Strong trademark voice, you know, where she sounds like a little kid. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, I, that's that's so interesting to me, you know. But you know, pretty much all the original actors from the uh, Kevin Smith movie universe reprises their roles here, but. 
you know, like I said, if you if you like stone, if you like buddy comedies, like stoner duos, like Cheech and Chong, or even the guys from Dude, Where's My Car, which is a funny <laughs> fucking movie. I love that movie. Um, you'll love Jay and Silent Bob. It's a great. It's a, they're just fucking awesome. But yeah, but yeah, I've been a, actually been a fan of them since I was like a teenager, since I was like fourteen or fifteen. But um, yeah. Fair enough. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big, like I said, I'm a big Jane Silent Bob fan, you know. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that. Anybody else want to say anything or talk about anything else? It is really fucking hard to draw what I'm drawing right now. Uh, what are you drawing? I, I'm trying to draw my OC, but in the same position that I have the Scarface picture as. Here. I'll send it in the chat so it makes sense. Um, I'm currently painting. Painting is currently cool. going on my evening walk to lose some weight. Okay, so if you last look, month I went from. Sorry, go ahead. If you look in the Discord chat, I'm drawing this, but instead of Scarface, it's my waifu. Uh, I see. Ah, oh, I see where you're doing. Uh huh. I don't even know if this is actually from the film. I think this, these are cut scenes. That's a meme. Meme. Well, like, it's a cut scene. I mean, sorry. Like it's yeah, not it full scene. film, but like it's um, it's a different background. Yeah, because but... I was I was watching it and like in the scene, I don't think he has a cigarette and I don't think he sits down. No, he does. I, I've seen the movie plenty of times. Yeah, that is an actual scene from the movie because there is a background in Frank's office where Tony confronts him, where he has that sort of like. Miami Beach, you know, background. Yeah, no, no, like that, th but I, I think this scene specifically, this didn't make it into the cut, because I, I, he's, I don't know. I was trying to find the part. I, I gotta watch it again. I don't <laughs> think the YouTube has the full clip, but yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember him sitting down in that scene though, because I've seen the movie like many different times. Did he have the it's my favorite gangster movie? Yeah, I believe he does. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a minute, but I've seen it. I've seen it enough times. Yeah, it's oh, it's my favorite well, gangster movie. I wasn't really watching it. I was per, I was preoccupied with other activities. So other activities. You were multitasking. Mhm. Mm we can say that. Uh, oh no. Uh. Wait, what? Um. That's all we're okay, Emma. Huh? I guess we'll just use our imagine. I guess we'll just use our imaginations then. <laughs> we don't need to get canceled again. Uh, oh God, it is going there, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> don't make me. I'm think kidding. No, but um. You better be. Don't make me know. think that way. <laughs> it's all changed the scene already. And so she's like rolling, 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 and she changes the background completely. You guys remember that shit from Chowder? I love Chowder. Chowder was my shit as a kid. That. Those fucking er mid to late two thousands Cartoon Network shows were the fucking shit. So you, you know, fucking I'm flat look, jack, I'm, total I'm, drama. I'm, I'm looking at lewd things, and you start talking about lewd things, and then no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to draw what? this, but I can't. It's so fucking hard. I wish it was better at drawing. Use the force, Luke. I think it's because I'm talking. Jeez. Usually when I draw, I listen to music and I zone out. But I really want to draw something naughty, though. Uh, I don't know what to draw, though. It's all so my nice. high school, One of my high school binders, one of my notebooks I had in high school, my composition books, I just drew a whole bunch of band logos. You know? And, uh... Now to look I drew at shit. what I want to do take it from. Huh? What? I'm painting. Uh-huh. What are you painting? I'm not sure yet. Should paint should paint a lemon? No. But, but it has legs and a f and arms and it's screaming with eternal agony. <laughs> My like style me. I'm not a landscapes. Or lettering. Lettering. You were just have one of those those days where you scream in eternal agony. I actually, yes. I was actually making a reference to a painting I did. I, I painted a, a lemon, 
but it had arms and legs and a face, and it's falling into a pit of darkness, and it's screaming in agony. Oh, uh, guys, you guys want to hear? That is a legit you guys painting. Hear... Did. Yo, something similar happened to me last night. You guys want to hear about what happened last night with me? Huh. Sure. So, um, my um, mom's ex-boyfriend got kicked out recently. And uh, he's not, he's in a hospital right now because he had a severe mental breakdown, but that was pretty much it for him. So my mom basically kicked him out, you know, because she was just going absolutely nuts. You know, like he'd start screaming in the middle of the night. And my mom had like, was just like, okay, I got to call the police, you know, and get him some help. So basically we were going, we were cleaning out the room he was staying in. And, um, well... I found some edibles, and these were edibles I would get at the at the smoke shop nearby. And I remember him telling telling him about that when we were in the car one time to go get my stuff for my ex girlfriend. And well, <laughs> I guess he went over there and got the same edibles that I got because I showed him what kind I got. And uh, I was like, "Oh, cool! Now I can get high." So I miss being high. And while um, a weed eater. I, <laughs> I took him. Oh, I fucking, lo- I fucking love that band. That's an awesome band. Oh, actually, anyway, I was referring to Metal Gear Solid 3 Weed Eater. You know, Weed Eater! Know. Anyways, so... Um, I took the edibles. Like, I took a small bite of it. And, um... I'm gonna draw this naked lady. <laughs> well, um, I, I, um... I was getting high, and it seemed like it was going as normal. And uh, my friend Ethan calls me up, and he's like, Hey, man, you want to hang out and make some music tonight? I'm like, fuck yeah, man, let's go. So um, we get there, I, and then we get in his room. I'm completely fucked up. Like, I start to get lost in a void of emptiness, like a complete oblivion. And, and I just start, this is kind of where it takes like a sad turn. So brace yourselves. Uh, I just start freaking out, and... Uh, Ethan starts getting pissed off because he was already dealing with some bullshit because he had to cut off a friend who was, um, found out was a, uh, well, we'll just say he was a, um, ADP 445. Uh-huh. 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 I knew it. Uh Sorry. He was, uh, he was looking for a cupcake, his friend. (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. That's gross. Sorry, that's... <laughs> like Jesus. If y'all know anything about EDP, then y'all know what I'm talking about. That's mm-hmm. why I was laughing. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> so, um, he was getting kind of upset at me. Like, he wasn't being an asshole, but he kind of just in my. I was still very much conscious, and I kind of knew what was going on. Like somewhere in the back of my mind, I realized that what was going on was not normal. This doesn't normally happen when I take edibles, especially the kind I had, because I had this kind before and it didn't fuck me up like that. So I realized what was going on. And Ethan brought up something and it says, sounds like you're off some psychedelics, man. That's like no normal edibles. Because honestly, it was like everything was so distorted, you know? Is it and, like listening and, to yeah, a just... Nine Inch Nails demo tape? Actually, I do have some insight on that. You said you took an edible? So, yeah. Okay, so THC cannot be metabolized through your liver or your digest- digestive tract, but THCA can. And when you decarboxylate uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC, it turns into THCA, which can be metabolized by your GI uh, tract. And so what happens is what your liver turns the THCA into is like a psychedelic. So, yes, you can put yourself in a complete hole if you have too much psychedelics, but it all depends. I mean, not psychedelics, edibles, but it all depends on your tolerance. And when it comes to edibles, smoking versus actually eating them is unbelievably different. So, here's the thing. So, I've had a similar sized bite that I took of the edibles that I had and because I've had them before had the exact same time before the only difference being that they were a different flavor because they okay. were like nerd ropes so those are good yeah I, my, my <laughs> guess is that John my mom's ex must have laced them with something because he's 
you know, I, I guess my mom told, didn't tell me this until after he was kicked out, and I didn't think much about it at the time, you know, because I didn't care. Yeah. You know, but apparently he was a drug user and had drugs in his room. So my guess, he must have laced something with that. You know, so it's, like I said, I had been more fucked up on that shit than I was ever previously, and I took a pretty small bite of it. I didn't just like eat, take like I didn't like eat half of it or anything, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, you know, it's just like Ethan started telling me, he's like, "Look, man, I gotta give it to you straight here, because you're my friend and I love you to death, dude." But the way you're acting right now. By the way, our mutual friend Noah was there too. We we're gonna all make music together, mm-hmm. and um, he's like, "Look, I have Noah here, and Noah's a good friend of mine, but you can't do this shit, man. You got to stop this. It's it's not okay. The way you're acting, nobody's ever gonna want to make music or work with you. And if you were like this when you're hanging out, and I have someone just as important as Noah with me, not only will I take your home, take you home at, immediately, but I will stop speaking to you entirely. Oh. You know, and I started to understand where he was coming from because at that moment, it's like it. it I, I started to realize it, even in the state I was in, that what he was very much saying was indeed true. Because I was making a complete ass of myself. You know, because I was just so that's how fucked up I was. Yeah. You know, and as soon as I sobered up, when I woke up this morning, I, you know, I just, you know, I just realized to myself, I made a realization that I need to stop and com- stop doing this shit, you know, because Ethan was right. Yeah. I, you know, it could have costed me my friendship with him if he wasn't my as good of a friend as he was because he's one of my bestest friends you know, I love him like a brother I love him to death and I've done favors for him and he's done favors for me you know so like from you know, from that point on I've given up doing drugs and shit like that you know but, uh, my, my, only, my, only, my only vice that I do is just smoking cigarettes you know but like I'm not gonna do like drugs anymore and I can't drink because of my medication. But, you know, it was just, you know, I, I you know, I, I just, you know, I realized that, you know, at that moment, I had never felt so small, you know, and I just, you know, it, it was just, you know, it was a rude awakening for me. You know, and I'm glad I had that. I'm glad, you know, I had someone like Ethan, you know, talk to me about that. You know, because honestly, if I didn't go to his house that night, I think I would be really fucking high again. You know, and, um, well, you know, it's something, it's just like, I, I don't want to, you know, push people away and make them feel uncomfortable. You know, make it seem like they wouldn't want to hang out with me with the way I am when I'm on, when I was fucked up like that. All right. Good. But yeah. So, I'm trying to do better now. That's that's good, man. That's good. Oh shoot! One second. What do y'all think? What's y'all's input? Uh, I mean, that's good that you're you're wanting to to not do uh you know drugs and stuff. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's a good that's a good thing. <clears throat> I mean, I, I I obviously don't do anything. I've done shrooms like twice, and like that's it. But you know, I don't have like not saying you have a problem, but you know, I don't I don't have this issue where I'm taking drugs and things. So like, I don't really know exactly what you're going through. But I'm just happy that you're making a decision that's gonna be better for you you know what i mean basically you know the reason why i why i was doing edibles was because well because of my own problems my own mental health trying to cope with my life the way it is right now so i barely have anything good going for me right now i mean yeah i'm on a track to making music with one of my bestest friends ever 
and potentially leaving something. But with all that's been going on with me personally, outside of that, it's just I, I don't have a job right now, and I've been looking so hard to no luck. You know, I don't have a car. You know, it's just like, it's all the shit that's going on with me, especially mentally. You know, it was my only way to actually feel something. You know, when I couldn't feel anything before, you know, everything that was, you know, going on has been going on with me personally. All the fucked up shit, all the drama, all the, the fucking income and job stuff. It's just like, you know, I just, you know, wanted a way out, you know, where I felt like it wouldn't hurt anybody, you know, like, well... A certain type of thing, like a certain act that someone does when they're just fed up with everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, I just, you know, just wanted to be in my own mind, you know, where I felt free, you know, but I guess last night kind of proved that, kind of just woke me up and told me, I was like, hey, yeah, you'll find your purpose. You know, because you'll find your calling. You will feel better. And you don't need that shit to fucking feel anything. You know? But I'm not going to turn into some straight-edge asshole where I'm going to get onto my friends or nag them about doing drugs. Because that's their choice. If they want to smoke weed or whatever or drink, it's not. I'm not going to... Unless they have a serious problem with it like I did, I'm not going to fucking get onto them about it. Yeah. You know, but it's like, you know, I, I just like, I just real, I just, like I said, I just had a root, root awakening and my best fucking friend, one of my bestest and closest friends, basically giving me an intervention. It's like, I, that's when I fucking fully realized like, yeah, I need to change. I gotta do better if things are going to get better for me. Because as much as I would like to just... As much as I would have liked to just get high all the time and do nothing, I realized that's not that's not what I need to do. I need to make a difference. I need to make a change in my life. Get up off my ass and find a way to get myself in a better position than I am where I am right now. Because yeah. I want to get a job. I want to start making my own music. I want to become a DJ. I want to be in a band. I want to eventually get my first car if I'm able to, if my doctor says it's okay because of my disabilities, then, you know, if it is, then, yeah, I would love to get my own car. And as soon as that happens, I can maybe see about saving up to move out of my mom's house. Of course, that's going to be a big, big leap forward, and I will have to discuss that with my parents because I'm going to need their fucking help, especially my dad's help because he's had more experience Moving, he's the only one in my family that I know of who's had more experiences moving into his own place, you know, than anyone I know in my family. Because when my um, when I uh, my parents divorced a couple of years after that, my dad went out and moved in his own apartment. You know, he fully moved out of my mom's house, and eventually I followed suit because my mom couldn't afford to take care of me after that, because you know my sister and brother. We're still living with them. My brother still lives with her. When my sister moved out, you know, now it's a little easier because, especially because of her line of work now, she's works in, you know, as a nurse, makes a lot of money from it too. So times are a lot different back then. But you know, at this point in my life, you know, I gotta try and make some changes for the better. But you know. It is what it is. I'll figure something out. I'll find my light. I'll find my light again. I'll find a way back home. I'll find a way through all this. You know. But in the meantime, I'm just try and persevere through this like I always do. I ain't giving up on anything or life yet. That's good. Got a lot to live for. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so what's new with y'all? Uh, I'm just trying to get better at drawing. Really, uh, I 
Uh, Waiting for a white paint to dry. I have been into a new genre of music. Uh, oh, yeah, what's that? It's, uh, <clears throat> so it's music from Mali. From Mali, Mali, Mali. Country. Uh, and there's this guy, there's two guys, there's a guy and his son that we have a liking to. And that is Ali Farka Toure and his son, View Farka Toure. Hmm. So, View actually is, because, you know, they're, they're Mali, so they, they speak French. Uh, the son, View, his name means old. V I E U X, View. Hmm. Oh my goodness, it's a busy day. Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> I found this meme where it's a screenshot. You know what I saw specifically live and I said, where this guy gets his tax on someone. And it says, I hate your soul. I hope the devil comes on, comes and sodomizes you on national television and a few AM radio stations. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, uh, the television, actual television part I can understand, but a few AM radio stations. Who even listens to AM radio stations? I don't know about who does. I mean, I my dad who. I think AM radio only works in like certain areas. My dad does it to listen to like you know sports broadcasts. He's a big sports guy, you know. But. I don't even know that many people who listen to the radio anymore, except we're in there in their cars. But you know, like outside of like driving, I don't know anybody else who listens to the radio. I, I mean, you recently? I got a stereo system in my room that I listen to the radio on sometimes. You know. uh, does does all I? Count? Huh? So What's like. That? I Ago, um, and I listened to uh, a few of uh, a couple of radio broadcasts they've done uh, of their concerts, specifically live at the Whiskey A Go Go. And oh, uh, so famous on you. Uh, that best recording is their uh, Whiskey at the no, I think they're, they're at the Roxy, I think. But they did. Wait, which band is this? This is 1981. This is K Rock. Uh, um, I mean, this is so early Boingo, Boingo, Boingo that they're playing stuff that they played on, like, the Gong Show. Oh, I love Boingo, Boingo. I'm a big Danny Elfman fan. Like, they play on Louise that's not even on an Oingo Boingo album. Cool. Like, that's how old it is. But, um... No, 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 um, I love listening to that kind of stuff. Oh, crap, one second. I'm sorry again. I'm gonna... I feel as fly as fuck, y'all. I got my leather jacket on. I got my fucking wine shirt on underneath. I'm wearing my torn black, like, elastic skinny jeans and my really nice pair of Nikes that my mom got me for Christmas. So I'm feeling kind of fly as fuck right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got so much strip like a broken faucet. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh. Oh, by the way, you guys, my 26th birthday is on April 8th. Nice. Yep. So let y'all know. He's... Yeah. Oh, God. I'm missing tune. Oh, oh, I can't... Man. I can't fucking draw right now, and it's making me so mad. <laughs> uh. <laughs> When you said man, I thought of the Amanda Bynes show where she's like, Meh. You guys remember that shit? You remember the Amanda Bynes show on Nickelodeon? Mm-mm. Oh, y'all are young. That's probably why. No, I just didn't watch a lot of Nickelodeon. Uh, I was more of a Cartoon Network guy. I'm both. I mean, of course, um... Damn it. I, I don't watch a lot of TV nowadays. But um, when I was a kid, I watched both a lot of Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, although Cartoon Network I watched more often. You know, and back then, you know, when I started watching Cartoon Network like four or five years old, it was like Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, Dexter's Laboratory, all that shit. Um, Nickelodeon, it was like Cat Dog, SpongeBob, 
fairly odd parents. Um, um, let's see here, Rocket Power, Drake and Josh, Ned's the Classified. You know, that was that was like what I watched on Nickelodeon on Cartoon Network back then. You know, and um, and when I was like mid, it was like mid to late two thousands. It wasn't a lot of Nickelodeon, but you know, Where's Jimmy? I watched like. You know, Oh yeah, Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, there's another one. <laughs> Forgot about that one. But um, Cartoon Network, it was like, you know, Boston Stone for Imaginary Friends, 16, Total Drama Island, uh, regular show. We want to start it out. Uh, Blackjack, Doubter. And I even liked some of those live you remember when Carson Hour briefly had that like those like live action shows you guys remember that shit yeah that sucked I hated that area of Carson Network the only one I liked from that era was um you know destroy build destroy with Andrew WK yeah I like that one you know, too that one um and I kind of like do what would happen because it was basically like a kid's teen's version of like Mythbusters you know I thought it was kind of cool like I, like, I just like to watch it destroy, build, destroy. And, you know, when I started getting more into, like, rock and metal music, uh, I, um, you know, one of the bands I got and remember getting into was A Day to Remember. And, um, first song I heard from them was All I Want. I watched the music video, and it had a lot of cameos from other bands and artists. And one of them was Andrew WK in the middle, like, Times Square, like, lip singing to the song's chorus. And of course, there was also Matt Papey from Trimbium, the pop punk band MXPX, you know, August Burns, Wet Red, oh, and wow. um, Vic Fuentes from Pierce the Veil kind of makes like a reference cameo to uh, like the song Carafinilia by Pierce the Veil, which also features Jeremy from A Day to Remember. And it means it involves like some shots in like a pay phone food booth, you know. Oh, okay, that's a nice cameo slash reference. You know, just this, this, this is a cool music and a good song. But, like, you know, I, I watched a lot of cool shows around that time that were popping off. And, uh, you know, like, I think the last total Cartoon Network show I remember watching that I actually enjoyed was probably, um, I'd have to say The Amazing World of Gumball. Like, I like that show, but after that, all the other shows after that, I just did not care for. After regular show, like, Cartoon Network died for me. Well, uh, like, yeah. You know, like I said, the only other show I liked, the last Cartoon Network show, like I said, was Amazing World of Gumball. But, like, you know, I did not like Clarence. I thought Uncle Grandpa was stupid. Oh, Uncle Grandpa was um, dog shit. Oh, my God. I don't know anybody that liked that show. And if anybody did like that show, I'd shoot them. But giant realistic. There was fight. also there was also the Teen the abhorrent Teen Titans and fucking Powerpuff Girls reboots. The Powerpuff Girls reboot was especially god awful. Oh yeah. Because there's that fucking gosh. scene where they're basically twerking. I don't remember. Like, wow, I'm a bunch of fight. Yeah. You forgot the uh, the self the writer of the show like being. Uh, Buttercups or whatever, Blossom's love interest. That's excuse me. Yeah, disgusting. it's modeled after him. Yeah, it's it's based after him. Yeah. Yeah, his self insert here, being uh, hit up by a little girl. Yeah, totally. He's the EDP horrible. Like, oh no, it's not bad. No bad. It's myself. Yeah, uh, like how compelling. Face the fucking wall. Face the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me with a fucking MP5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wood chipper go burr. Dude, I want to see. I want to see a like a TV show of Jordan going around hunting pedophiles and like, it's like it's like jo or who's that guy that catches pedophiles? Uh, Chris Chris Hansen. Yeah, so it's like it's like Chris Hansen, but instead it's like. Jordan just walks into the room and just shoots the fucking pedophile and then leaves. <laughs> Jordan versus uh, uh, 
what's his face? I can't I remember. Saw, I saw EDP. <laughs> no, Peter Scully. He's worse. I saw I saw a post on like I think it was either Facebook or Instagram where it's just like, what if we did another season of Catch a Predator, and basically instead of Chris, and it's Eric Andre and he does whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> I was, was going to say, um, what if it was, instead of instead of uh, Chris Hansen, it was, uh, let's see, Dog the Bounty Hunter? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all know who Eric Andre is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, tortured my friends with him. Fucking love Dude, Eric me and, Andre. Me and, me and Mark used to watch Eric Andre all the time. That is true. We used to quote his shit while we worked at Lowe's. That is true. I love it. I love the episode with Tyler the Creator because you like, you know Tyler the Creator. He's a pretty chaotic person, like Eric Andre. <laughs> Tyler, your dad's and here. You know, yeah, you're like you know, he did his homework with this show because a lot of celebrities that come on, I think it's like a regular talk show, but it's just like, uh, no, that's uh, it's not just your regular you talk show into that room, right? Yeah, it's like. It's just, it's like <laughs> It's 96 degrees. It's very humid. Um, the carpet is soaking wet. Not soaking, but it's it's the, the carpet is damp and smells like fish. <laughs> and all of the furniture is very dirty. <laughs> that is that is what you see when you go into Eric Andre's uh, studio. It smells like fish. Because so, they will bury they will bury rotting fish under the guest chair. So damp and smells like fish and very dirty. Yeah, it sounds like my last one of my last sexual encounters. That's oh out. no! Oh god! Dark and damp, dripping cake. Where did my fucking phone go? Oh, there it is. I need to check my work schedule for tomorrow. But anyways, well, like anyways, like you know, Tyler understood the assignment. The second he appears, he just comes up and knocks. <laughs> he's at Eric's desk. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good with Lance Reddick, where like Lance like fucking pranks Eric. I was like, oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah, if I was on the Eric Andre show, I'd, I'd show up in a thong. That was all I would wear, just the thong, or maybe some sandals or flip flops. <laughs> like that's all I would fucking wear on the show. Because why not? It, it's not the worst thing that's happened on the show. <laughs> yeah. What was one of the worst like Eric Andre ones? Like, there's that one guy that almost like beat the shit out of him too. Uh, I know Flavor Flav almost beat beat him up. I know the guy who sells the the sauce. Uh, he's from The Sopranos. Uh, he, I'm pretty sure he played pussy or uh. Uh, one of the one of the the rats on the the, the Sopranos, but uh, it was it was that guy. He sold the sauce. Uh, Eric had the guy put his balls in the sauce, and then like, he's like, "I'm gonna fight you." That's so but, uh, Flav, Flav was about to fight Eric. He's like, "You grab my dick, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you right here, right now." Holy shit! Yeah, because he grabs his, he gets the PA to do it, and then he gets him, he does it himself. And one of my favorite. One of my favorite moments from that, from that show is where Eric just walks up into a fucking jewelry store and just fucking starts robbing it <laughs> casually in <laughs> broad daylight. He just breaks a glass display and just takes it and everybody's like, what the fuck's going on? And then he gets arrested. <laughs> like, you're, just, you're, just, you're just at a jewelry store. My own business, maybe find something for your fiance to propose or your girlfriend to propose to her or you're getting an anniversary gift for your wife or husband and this weird fucking man walks in with a fucking like a walking stick or whatever just casually breaks the fucking glass to its display and you're just like he's just like he just doesn't care you clearly see he's just doing it casually like it's just a fucking like it's a normal thing for him <laughs> you'd be like I, what would you in a situation like that you know, you wouldn't know what to do. You'd just be like, oh, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> That's what I love about Eric Andre. He just does not give a fuck. You know, anything basically goes on a show. Uh, I just, like, 
like he's just on a subway with a fucking like fucking bowl around his around his you know fucking neck. <laughs> I'm your oh, communion. Fucking... Eat for me. Here's Fruit Loops inside. <laughs> he pours milk all over him. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't get my job at Fruit Loops. I didn't get my job at Fruit Loops. I I am now your communion. Eat for me. I get my arm. I fucking love her, Godfrey. <laughs> Time to crack open a can of Dr. Thunder. Third best Dr. Pepper clone, right behind Mr. Pip. You guys like Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Oh, hey, you know something we should do on like a Discord call or like a, you know, you know what we could do? So you guys seen those videos, those like meme videos where it's like Biden, Trump, and or Obama just doing like a tier list? Uh-huh. We should all do something like that, you know, and like do it for our for a YouTube channel video or something. What do y'all think? Like, we do a tier list or something. Yeah. Like basically, we just like okay, like something we all like that we're all well versed in. Like it was a certain video game, we uh do like a character tier list and offer our thoughts figure out where we should put it at, you know. <laughs> what, what do y'all think? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, next time we do one of these, look, it won't be a podcast. Do like a tier list video. How's that sound? Yeah. You know, we just need to find something to do a tier list of, you know, that we can all agree upon. Uh. Okay, what, what do y'all think we should do for our first tier list video? Uh, I don't know. How about this? How about we do, like, um, if we can, someone can a tier list of this, we should do, like, Hot Wheels, War Race, and Accelerators characters. But I want to be left higher. What's that? I want to be left higher of right arm. <laughs> uh, okay. I want to be. I want to be stupid Voltron. Hot Wheels amalgamation. All right, how about this? Let's uh, let's go ahead and like discuss what characters, you know, we think should go in what tier list. Like, we'll name off a character and we'll all discuss which which tier they should go in. You know, let's do that. Okay, so we got A, B, C, and D tier. You know, just four tiers just to keep it simple. You know, and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. How's that sound, y'all? Okay. Like, right, right now? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I'm just sounding something just to keep make the podcast a little more interesting. Like, we don't have to actually... Like share a screen, just actually make a tier list. We just like go ahead and discuss which character tier we think the characters go in, and then you know, I just go from there. Anyone on board? Is Emma still here? Emma. She always leaves. Sam, you there? Huh, Sam. Of that guy with the uh, the picture of him and his all his girlfriend doing that's, the devil horns. Mark. Oh, Mark. Sam. I don't know. I'm terrible with names. All right. We we need to wait for someone to get us on this because I want it to be like a free person discussion, like a three way discussion. Yeah, <laughs> three way. I said three way. <laughs> Oh, Emma just left. Mm. Oh, no, she's back. Hear me? Yeah, okay. Oh. Emma. Can I, I be have, hurt? I have an idea. Okay. So, I was talking about this. Now, I think for the next time we do a podcast, <laughs> rather instead of it being no, a No, hun, I could hear you the entire time. I just apparently couldn't be heard. Oh, Okay. 
what, what were the things you were saying? Uh, what I was trying to say is, I know nothing about Hot Wheels characters. Ah. Uh, okay. Yes. So, like, I will be of no help in that conversation. But I will. I would be down to join. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Okay, okay who's a fan of Star Wars? Uh, I, like I like Star Wars. Wars. All right, let's do do it with Star Wars characters then. But we'll start off. We'll start off with the uh, original trilogy characters. No side characters. No characters that just like everyone and apparently everyone in Star Wars. Anyone that appears on screen has a backstory now. Apparently, so we'll just all do like the mainline, you know, Star Wars original trilogy characters. No weird side characters like Biggs, or you know, or whatever Admiral Veers. You know, just the main, just all the characters we know very well, uh, and we'll do in chronological order. All right, how's that sound okay. to you? Okay, all right. Let's start off with the New Hope. Okay, so where are we placing Luke Skywalker? Which tier? Li- which tier should we put him in? Well, what, what's the difference in tiers? Okay, so we got S. We got we're, we're gonna do like four tier lists. We're gonna do A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier. D tier being worst, and A tier being the highest. Like worst characters go into D tier. And we'll kind of like discuss why. I think he's like a B tier. Do I put Luke in B tier? I okay. So I'll be honest. He's kind of like a whiny baby for most of it, and like accidentally almost uh, fucks his sister like twice. Okay, but I'm like I'm talking about the movies as a whole because he does. He's a whiny in an Empire Strikes Back in terms of the Jedi. You know, like we're not just doing just like movies individually. We're doing the whole original trilogy. You know, and then we'll Aww. do. Kind of, Characters for the prequel trilogy, but I'm also like thinking of him being in the new um, one movies as well. Like he was very like broody and like I want to be left alone. Yeah. Okay, but, but we're just gonna do like a trilogy. That we're not gonna talk about. We don't have to talk about the sequels because I'll go on a tangent about the sequels. So we're just <laughs> we're just discussing we're just discussing characters from the original trilogy, and if y'all want, we can do like a. We can do it again with the prequel trilogy characters, you know. And, uh, yeah. Can we do at one point one for the Mandalorian? I am at not some point? Gonna, I have not seen much of the Mandalorian except maybe the first two. <gasps> You're a disgrace. I've seen the first two seasons, but I don't have Disney Plus anymore, so I haven't seen the new seasons yet. I yeah. love the baby. I kind of want to wait till the show's over and I've seen all the seasons to discuss that because, you know, there could, be, there could be new characters introduced and they can just go to a completely different arc. Yeah, but, um, yeah, nice. I still think, like, Luke was a whiny baby in the originals. I only saw him as a whiny baby in the first movie because, like I said, he's, he's completely different in the next two movies. Like, at the end of Return of the Jedi, he's a full-fledged Jedi Knight. He's pretty wise for his age you know he goes through and he goes through the literal hero's character during art so he's he completely changes he becomes really wise you know he becomes a warrior like by the end of that he's 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 the embodiment of what a true jedi knight should be so you know because of that character development i put him in a tier at the very top because he is the hero. He is that Jedi hero. You know, that I think Jedi should aspire to be like, you know? True. What about you, Devlin? Do you have any, you have any thoughts? Or... Say, did we lose Devlin? No, I'm just listening and looking at naughty things. <laughs> oh you, my god. What do you think, Devlin? Huh. Do you think eight, Luke should be eight tier or? Uh, I mean, if you're just going off the movies. Yeah, like we're doing the original trilogy. Like we're doing, we're not going to discuss the sequel trilogy. Like we're going to do characters from the original trilogy, and then when we're done with that, ranking them like all the mainline characters. And I would put, so I, I'd put Luke. Wait, what's the highest tier? A tier. Uh, I'd put Luke as A tier in Return of the Jedi. Um, oh, yeah. B in A New Hope and, like... 
we're doing all we're doing characters like all the movies like we're not categorizing them by which movie they're in like we're doing just the movies as a whole like in general you know oh. but yeah uh, I really only like Luke in Return of the Jedi because at that point he's become a master. Yeah, that's kind of my argument. You know. In Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Oh. Like, everybody loves Empire. I like Yeah, Return no, I'm going to say that I'm one of those people, but yeah, I, I think Return of the Jedi is the perfect trilogy ender. You know, like, for me, that's just aside from, like, the Jedi Academy games, you know, and, like, the Thrawn trilogy and all the EU books. Like, that's just... That's literally it. That's like for me. That's that's all the only last time we see Luke on screen. Yeah. All right. Okay. A tier it is. Okay. Let's do. Okay. Princess Leia. Hey. 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 All the fucking way. Hey. All right. Okay. Anyone want to elaborate, or should we just move on to Han Solo? She is a badass. She picks she up. Had to deal with picks up a fucking. She was an amazing person. She was fucking. Mm, dude, she's my fucking favorite. If you can't yeah, tell. Yeah, I like you know what's interesting about her? Before her, any mainstream movie that featured a female protagonist, she fell into the damsel distress trope. She was the first mainstream so she character. Broke that mold. Yeah, she, she was the first mainstream character to actually break that trope. Like she ended up saving the guy's skin. You know? But yeah, A tier, uh, yeah. Alright. Okay, next up is Han Solo. I would actually hang on, no no. If we're rating them in the tiers, I think she goes above Luke. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I would agree. Because, right, like, yeah. not only does she break the mold of, like, damsel in distress, but she also becomes part of, like, the leading the rebels. So, like, yeah. See, I'm a little biased at putting Luke at the top because when I was watching Star Wars since I was nine, and I've always looked up to Luke as, you know, being confident and persevering despite being the odds being against you. Now, of course, Luke has his flaws. You know, that rash mistake he made at the end, end of Empire Strikes Back where he goes against Yoda's teachings and goes to fight Vader anyway. It's just like, yeah, that was a big lesson for him. He not only did Han get sent off to Jabba, but he also loses his fucking arm, one of his arms, one of his hands. And, of course, he fought, apparently everybody's Apparently, the big bad in the universe is everybody's sad now. <laughs> I'm finally back. Start getting guy. like trapped multiple times. Like she had been put in like kind of like a holdings uh, cell so many times by so many different people. And I'll be honest, she was hot in the gold bikini too. Yeah. Uh, can, can I say something? Yeah, I'm really... talking about Leia. Can I say yeah, something that, really quick? As a kid, that was like, ooh. Can I say okay, something all right. real fast? I don't know why, but like I've never looked at Princess Leia as like everybody's like, oh, like you know, like everybody wants to nut. I don't. I never found like Princess Leia sexually attractive. <laughs> I don't know why. I found her personally as an inspiration to be okay with having that slight sexual portion of life. Oh yeah, like, no, I know what you mean. But that's like, how I saw it personally. Every, everybody always like goes goo goo gaga over like her in the bikini. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't get it. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know. I just I've never had like that kind of feeling towards her at all, which I think okay. is really funny because it's enough. like everyone's just like, oh my god. I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> all right, let's do. Let's Han Solo next, where we all play Solo. I love Han Solo. I think he should also be here, but I learned the other two. Yeah, I mean, I like him, you know, honestly, but part of me kind of wants to put him in D tier because I feel like, you know, he does the, okay, he does go through changes, but, you know, it's like, I kind of look at it like from like Harrison Ford's perspective, it's like at the end, you know, he's just like, okay, I just want this character to be killed off, you know, and I go, why? <laughs> But, you know, I, I will put him in A tier. I'm not going to put him in A tier, but part of me wants to put him in B tier. Because I may mean, feel like he's a, a little one dimensional. You know, like the cool, smuggling badass. You know, which isn't inherently bad, but yeah, I'll put him in A tier, though. I never see him smuggle anything. Yeah, he's just oh. a con man. Isn't that his whole thing? Even though too? he is he's a smuggler, yeah. He's a smuggler? Yeah, he's, he's supposed to be a good smuggler. <laughs> Which is like the, no, no, I think you see him smuggle one thing, 
and that's in the Star Wars Seven where he has like the like the Guardians of the Galaxy two villain, uh, the two alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the only time he smuggled something because he was smuggling that creature, and he wasn't even in the Falcon. Oh my God, you're so right. Yeah. Okay. I just realized that. I like. I, mean, I like. He smuggled I like, Luke into the Death Star with as, the. As, as Harrison Ford in the Lucasfilms universe, I prefer him as Indiana Jones and Han Solo, even though that I love Han Solo. Well, the thing is, like... I mean, I mean even Harrison Ford hates Han Solo and loves Indiana Jones, so... That does make right. more sense. So, well, A tier, then? Because Han Solo... Even... Put him bottom of A tier, because he's, like, kind of in-between. Okay, fair enough. Okay, the that character why Han Solo's in the new movie is because he had to die. Like, that was part of the contract. That was a binding contract. Yeah, we, we know, but we're, we're doing a tier list here in King, so let's not get into too much trivia and sidetrack ourselves. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we all know we all know about it, but... Alright, okay. Big bad is back. Darth Vader. Where, y'all, where would y'all put him? A. 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 Ah! Okay. So here's Sorry. The, here's... Here's why I'm putting him in A tier. Why I think he's like personally, I think. I, okay, so I want to say Emperor Palpatine is my favorite villain of all time in the Star Wars universe because how oh, cunning and manipulative and smart he is. Now Vader, really, I think, really as a whole, the entire original first six Star Wars films are about Anakin in a way, if you think about it. But like, because <laughs> he's he's prophesied to be the chosen one, which. I know a lot of people were very on that at the beginning, but like, you know, if you take into account the ending for Return of the Jedi, you know, it's just like, yeah, he does fulfill the prophecy. He does take out the Sith, you know, himself, Darth Vader, he's fully retained, and he kills off Palpatine. Nobody better mention those other three movies, Rumley, because I'm not fucking, I'm not about to go there. If anybody mentions those movies, I will fucking scream. Anyways, who y'all want to elaborate on why you put him in tier, A tier? Uh, I think his character is very fleshed out and tragic, and I love that kind of shit. So I think Darth Vader deserves uh, A for a uh, good reason uh, because of his characterization and the fact that you can sympathize him you don't have to agree with what he's doing as a Sith but what you can do is say oh man you know what, what a guy down on his luck and I think it's a little, little more I think it's a little more than that but yeah you know of course it's more than that I'm just saying on my side I like it because he's a sympathetic character not a justified one Six. Yeah, you know, I, I something I never understood is why people had a problem with that when Revenge of the Sith was always like, oh, he's just a tragic character. That's not awesome. He just, he was so cool in the original Charlie Brown. Like, really? You have a problem with him being fleshed out as a character? Really? I never understood that. I mean, like, okay, I get it. It does shit. Because, like, these movies came out, like, 20, about almost 30 years after, like, the end of 30 years after the original trilogy. But it's like, you know, I love that shit, because it's the same way with, like, Darth Maul coming back in the Clone Wars. Yeah. You know? I fucking love that, that Dave Filoni and George Lucas brought him back and added more to his character, because, you know, I'll just go, I'll, I'll further elaborate on this and when we start talking about the prequel characters, but they really fleshed him out in the Clone Wars. And by the way, when we, um, we won't talk about, you know, Clone Wars characters in the prequels tier list. But we're gonna we can use that as a point of reference for ranking our characters. Like, okay, we all know the Clone Wars made the prequels better, so we can use that, you know, if we wish, you know, for our rankings of the prequels characters. I will I will I will let that slide. You know. But yeah, I agree. So next up, let's uh let's try Chewbacca. How are y'all feeling about Chewbacca? Chewbacca Uh A tier. I think you all know where I stand, by the way I said that. Okay, y'all are probably going to hate this, but I don't feel that strongly about his character. <gasps> Hold on. Okay, let me explain myself. I love Chewbacca. He's iconic. And I get why he doesn't have that much dialogue, but I think really, you know, aside from, like, maybe 
you know, that brief cameo he has in Revenge of the Sith, I don't think George Lucas did much of anything to flesh his character out. You know, you know, it's just, she's just like, okay, he's he's Absolutely. not terrible. I mean, he's not on the same level as like Rose, you know, who from which sequel trilogy movie. Mm. But it's like I, I just, I just, you know, I don't think he's that great of a character. That I mean, yeah, he's cute, he's lovable, you know. But it's like, you know, I'm not trying to take away from it from him. You know, I mean, I love Peter Mayhew, and I was absolutely devastated when he passed away because, well, you know, he was a gentle guy, and he was a great person. But, like, you know, it's just, I, I just can't put him any higher than beats here for me. You know? Uh, I also think that, uh, well, considering Chewbacca, I think there's a severe lack of <clears throat> the Christmas special mentioning. I never mm-hmm. watched I never watched the Christmas special. I you don't want to watch glorious. it. You really don't. It is the it is the biggest dumpster fire you can think about. It's I was glorious. Talking, when I was getting, when I was still getting stoned, I'd watch it, and I was like, the only way I could watch it was stoned. Pretty <laughs> much, it's that bad. It really is that bad. De- Devil and no, like, it's bad. Oh. It, I'll be honest, it is bad. But I find so much like pleasure in how horrible it is. Oh, I, I thought you were. Why is it bad? Because the, the effects are terrible, the acting is terrible somehow. And yeah. uh, the, the Chewbacca's kids are terrifying. They <laughs> made Luke Skywalker look like a fucking like, pen doll. Like, yeah. like, get, get, like, Chewie's kids are basically like, you get uh, the Ewoks, you melt them, you melt the, the plastic down, you send it to China for a reissuing, and then you give it clutch cargo mouths, and then that is literally Chewbacca's kids. And there and there's so much focus on them, and all they do is just war and scream all throughout the movie. And then there's these weird fucking segments that have nothing to do with it. It's just kind of like, it's basically like someone jangling keys in front of you, you know. And it's just like there's weird fucking scenes. There's a scene with Jefferson Starship like doing a music video, you know. There's a fucking scene with, with like fucking, uh, Art Carney. That's just so fucking weird. Where it's just like given an instructional video, a very boring instructional video on how to use, like, a fucking transport, t- like, a communication device. And it's, like, it's just so robotic. And R. Carney's a, he's a great actor. He's one of the, it's like, a really great actor. But it's just, like, he's so monotonous in this segment. And then all of a sudden, the only memorable part that I really liked from it was when it all of a sudden cuts the animated part, where this was basically... Boba Fett's first on-screen appearance. Even though it wasn't a lot of action, but this is like the first time we saw Boba Fett. You know, before Empire Strikes Back. Actually, you know, technically the first time was like in a parade. Like a float parade or something, but yeah, Chewbacca honestly, I, I don't know. I, I Personally, I put him in B tier. You know, I still love him, but yeah, B tier. Any objections? Uh, no, I just love the um. The reason I love the special so much is this because it pissed off so many people. Okay, fair my, enough. My favorite right. thing, my favorite thing about Chewie, is when when Han gets out of the carbonite, and he can't see, and Chewie like comes up to him and he's like hugging him, and he's like he's like yeah yeah I I love you too buddy. <laughs> He's like, I can't, I can't see, Chewie. I can't see. <laughs> uh, <what the> where? <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, let's let's go ahead and talk. Let's go ahead and break over that. Just just because we mentioned him, where were y'all put him at? I don't know why Boba Fett's like considered like super cool when he had like nothing to do in the show and blah blah blah. Like yeah, he was cool in the books, but like as far as the movies go, it's like I don't know. I don't really get the Boba Fett hype. I mean, he's never Yeah, really... I mean, okay. He was basically that just made to sell action figures. Okay, he was cool. But you know, honestly, if we're just ranking him, it's since we're only doing original trilogy, I can't put him any higher than C tier or any lower than that. I was gonna say he's like just not great. So I was gonna say actually, to be honest, D. I put him in C tier because he still does have a cool factor to him. But it's just like, 
you know, if he doesn't do much of anything, I mean, yeah, okay, he, okay, so, in other forms of media, like the Clone Wars series, you he know, he's really well. cool, he's really cool, you know, the comic books, the, the novels, you know, I, I would put him in A tier then, but like, you know, of course, and there's that. So wait, wait, hold on. Uh, question. About the Mandalorian, I would still not put him any higher than C. I have a question. <laughs> I have an answer. What's up? Is Boba Where's Fett, the cashier? Is Boba Fett oh. a clone of Jango, or is that his actual son? No, it's that's a clone of Jango. Okay, so technically he is a clone, but so basically all the clones in the Clone Wars during that era were all altered to have a double growth rate. So that way they could be, you know, more. Per- they could be ready to go because by the time they're technically ten years old, they're they're basically in their twenties, you know. So that yeah. cause they're because they they're bred, you know, they're trained, you know, when they grow up pretty fast. So that way they can be ready. So that way we don't have to wait like twenty years for them to be ready, you it's know. Because it kind of makes sense if you watch Attack of the Clones, you know, you just see Obi Wan go into, you know. To the basically to the um yeah facility. I, I, I know how you know. that stuff works. I just didn't know if Boba Fett was a legit clone, or yeah, he's a clone. Yeah, or, or Jango's actual like son. All right, I'm feeling C tier on Boba Fett though. Any any objections? Um, as a, like in the original trilogy, I'd say Boba Fett's uh no, because he does have some spotlight in the sixth movie, so I would say he's more of a D D tier. Just because, like, yeah, I know everybody thinks he's cool, but he literally had two lines in the original, like, movie he appeared in, so it was just kind of like, eh. And one of them was, ah! Anybody get oh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, yeah. I think he's here. Y'all can fight me, but I think... Okay, I'll put him in D tier. I don't think Boba Fett's that cool. I know that sounds mean, but, like, I don't think he's that cool. Alright, fair enough. I'll put him in D tier. Ah, okay, um... Like, I think the Wookiee help. bounty hunter is way, way more interesting. Okay, all right. Emperor Palpatine. No. Uh, Emperor Palpatine. A tier, A tier. I shoot. I say A or high B. I can shoot. Okay, so from the tip of my fucking cock. I think oh, this shit. is the. Okay. Oh. Okay, the... Right, okay. Okay. So for this character, um, this Saul Goodman. Lightning oh. shoots from my fingertips. All right. Listen. Let's focus here. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> so. Okay, so I think this will be the only exception where I'm going to include him from the prequels as well. You know, because honestly, I feel like it would just it would just not would make much 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 sense. Because honestly, yo, who's the main villain of the first six movies? You know, and as I said earlier, Anakin's pretty much the main character of the first, of the um for old for the whole saga. Um, so because of that, because you know we see him how conniving he is. How manipulative! How he plans things out. I have to put him in A tier, you know. Yeah. Basically, he's the, in my opinion, he is cinema's greatest villain, you know. And uh, honestly, I, I I'll just put him in A tier. That's my reasoning why. What do you? What What about y'all? Are you all feeling? I shoot lightning. I'm cool. Eh. You said all of my thoughts already. So. I agree. If I could be any, if I could be any Star Wars character, I'd want to be Palpatine just because it's funny. Okay. All right. Eight tier it is. All right. Let's see who else. Okay. Let's do Yoda. How are we all feeling about Yoda? Fucking A plus 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 tier. Are you fucking kidding me? If you don't like Yoda, I'm gonna beat the living shit out of you. Yoda is literally okay. one character you Yoda can't dislike. With, um, baby from you know Mandalorian. I know we're not talking about like the newer ones, but y- you you can't have baby without the original Yoda. So Yoda, yeah, but, well, a- yeah, but we're not talking about Grogu. Uh, no, his name is Baby. I mean, I'm, um... But my point here being. You can't have Baby without Yoda being the precursor, and he was an amazing mentor to um, Luke. Okay, yeah, that's a good explanation. I was going to say the same thing. He um, he he teaches Yoda Luke pretty important stuff, you know, and 
you know, we, we just, you know, it's just like all the stuff he teaches Luke. Like, at this point, he's basically ready to die, but he still decides to train Luke a bit. You know, and I, I know I'll even give some credit to The Last Jedi. I know I said when we talk about those, um, his appearance in those movies where he's teaching Luke. That's got light, but I think so. The opposite here. Um, any objections? Any anyone? Mm. Uh, no, I'm fine. I don't mm. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, next Yoda, up, what's Yoda okay. X Seth Rogen? All right, okay. Obi Wan Kenobi, old Ben Kenobi. Where are hey, we putting this boy at? Hey, Double hey. S tier. Hey. Triple S tier. If you okay. know. Him- I will find you and fight you. I love Obi Wan. I mean, He's my favorite if character. If you're going to talk about like tragic backstories and like fucked up shit, Obi Wan Kenobi's like one of the most like oh one yeah, of the most, I like agree. brutal shit like like one of the most saddest and tragic stories of any characters dealt with in Star Wars. It's Obi Wan Kenobi's story. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. So, like he loses his master and the the burden of training this nine year old kid who. May or may not have some problems, serious problems for him later on down the road, you know. Which honestly, I think was one of the shittiest moves the Jedi Council did. To, I mean, I know they were honoring Qui Gon's wish, just as Qui Gon did want Obi Wan to train him, you know, saying he did train him. But like, I feel like it would have been better if they gave Luke, if they gave young Anakin off to like maybe I don't know, Mace Windu or Flo Koon or whatever. Qui Gon was gonna train Luke. I mean. Yeah, he was. He was going to train Anakin, and I think he was even going to be the Jedi Order, too, because with, cause Dooku was getting ready to leave the Jedi Order, you know, and I think what they were going to do was kind of go off and train him on his own, but of course, you know, Qui-Gon died after Dooku fell to the dark side, but yeah, I'm putting Obi-Wan in A tier, just, you know, well, we'll get to the prequel Obi-Wan, and then we can all kind of go off about how much we love Ewan McGregor, but yeah, Alec Guinness, even though he fucking hated Star Wars, he hated it. He thought it was so fucking stupid. He still did a very, very good job at playing old Ben Kenobi. You know, he was also a really, really great actor. So, yeah. I'm feeling A tier for old Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Old Benjamin Kenobi. Alright. R2-D2. The Chad. A tier. A tier. That's cool. Like, R2 is cool, only... but he, like, he does not add much in the way of like dialogue character. You just see him as a sassy robot. He does a no, lot. No, R two D two is literally like a lot of the reasons why things happen throughout Star Wars. Exactly. That's what I was say. That is true. If it wasn't for him, the rebels, he would have never met. Luke would have never gone on to become a Jedi. He would never had to go and look for him, which would eventually lead him to find come across old Ben. Ben would have never gotten that message to come and help the rebels. You know, they would have never gotten the Death Star plan, most of which we see in the original trilogy that happens, all because of R2. R2 witnessed it all. He's seen everything. He saw Anakin's fall to the dark side. He, 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 was, he, saved, he helped save Qui-Gon and everyone else aboard that starship, you know, Cross that blockade and attack and friend the menace. He's just he did so much. He's you know, that's he, he's basically carried some of the franchise, helped to carry it and move things along. You know, and plus, he's just such a charming and lovable character. You can't hate him, he's very charming, he's very funny. You know, like in my opinion, aside from him, I, I, I think he's a very good comic relief too. So, because of the focus he serves. You know, and the important, important purposes he serves, everything he does, I ain't here because I don't think that's too much of a plot would have happened without him. So yeah. Any any Who's objections? Any thoughts? Book? Oh, sorry, sorry. I uh, I'm I'm doing paperwork right now. I'm sorry. Oh, you good? I was like, what is that noise? I love that <laughs> book. <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, so, how would you, okay, Shock T, who cares about Shock T over here? Who is uh, we're doing freaking, we're, 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 we're not, do, we're not doing freaking characters here. Aww. We're, we're just doing the original trilogy characters, and we're going to talk about the freaking characters. And then, yes, I'm also I the freaking trilogy. I don't 
doing that and we keep referencing prequels. I know. Yeah, I only you gotta add some context. We get to the prequels and then I, like I said, will even use like character development from the Clone Wars as part of our rankings here. Oh, since, okay. you know, Clone Wars basically enhances the prequels. But yeah, I'm putting R2 in, you know, fucking A's here. Now we can't talk about R2 without his fellow kind of part C3. What are we thinking, guys? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I'm I know he can't have R2 without 3PO, but honestly, I just Anakin. The Anakin built C3PO for his mom. That's like the most heartwarming fucking shit. And the fact that like he literally went on this huge fucking journey, and like it's just so sad. Like C3PO's. Backstory is fucking sad. There's even a comic book where Darth Vader come acro- comes across C three PO once again and kind of like ponders about the past. Yeah, but that's one of the very few times Vader, you know, in the current canon universe, actually remembers, reflects upon his past life. You know, but yeah. yeah. So okay, you know, what? fair enough. I'll put him in A tier. All right. Um. Let's see. Okay, now we'll just do like you know. I can't think of any other characters. I'm saying like you remember any other main line, any main characters. Uh, oh, what about Jabba Nine Nine? Yeah, I was gonna say Jabba the Hutt. Okay, um, how are we feeling about Jabba? Uh, uh, I think I think his uh, speech is very funny. Okay, he's very iconic, but I don't know. I'm going to have to put him in beats here. I, like I his, think he's really gross. I, I like his little pet thing that looks like a rat that goes... <laughs> Boy, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, what about Bib Fortuna? Um, Bib Fortuna is not that important to the plot. Is he's that not that the, important. Is that the well, he's the translator. Yeah, he's he's uh, Jabba's translator. That guy creeps me out. Okay, but I'm talking, but I mean, he's too obscure to be considered a man. I'm talking like main side characters and main characters. Oh, so, so. the Womp Rat doesn't exist? Just kidding. <laughs> the Womp Rat. <laughs> How do we feel about the, uh, the, uh, the, uh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not done with Java yet. We're not done with our. We aren't done with Java. I think he was really slug. rapey. That's why I didn't really like him all that much. Honestly, I don't think he's that great with Vaughn. I'm going to put him in the tier. I thought he kind of sucked. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I'm feeling about. I'm putting him in D tier. Any objections? I'm not. I'm no. not objecting. I kind of want okay. to make squishy, plushy of Java. All right. Okay. Let's do. <laughs> let's do another villain. Let's do, there's one more villain. Okay. Let's do Grand Moff Tarkin. Ooh. Okay. Who's that? Who's that again? Uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. He's the uh, here. His character. The uh, like Vader's like one of Vader's friends on uh, the New Hope. He was the uh, one in, trying to get like information. Oh, General uh, Tarkin. Leia. Okay. Yeah, Tarkin. Or just Tarkin for short. How are we feeling about Tarkin? Yeah. Uh, I like him. He's cool. He looks like a Nazi. Honestly, I'm biased for this, and this is the reason why I'm putting him in A tier. It's because while he was good friends with my favorite actor, Christopher Lee, who would go on to play Count Dooku. And oh, he was, I love Count Dooku. Tear Cushing. Christopher, Christopher Lee, like I said, they were really good friends, and they starred in some of my favorite horror films of all time. So I'm a little biased. As to, that's why I'm putting him in A tier. But also because he was a very imposing force. He was actually, even though he was a little arrogant, he was very much a threat to the Rebel Alliance. You know, he played a pretty big part during the Empire's early years, you know, especially in, like, the Rebel series. You know, and, you know, Rogue One, even though the fucking... The fake technology at the time was a terrible, you know, like a fucking video game character, you know. But he was like a PS5 character. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, Tarkin, you know, he was the main villain. I'm gonna say, I say he was the main villain of the new hope. Vader was the main villain of, of Empire Strikes Back, and Emperor was Return of the Jedi. So, yes, you know, he's one of the OG villains. I'm gonna put him in A tier, you know. He was just badass. You know, he was what Boba Fett should have been. You know, a good villain with characterization. Yeah, we're doing characters. We're doing characters. And, you know, I'm also going to throw this in. We're also going to do, like, 
certain factions as well that appear in the movies. You know, just just because you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Any objections? No. No objections. Okay. Store troopers, how are we feeling? Where should we put them at? Uh, I love women. They're, they're really not. iconic. You know what's funny? A lot of people wonder why at the beginning of the film they're such good shots, but then like later on in the movie they kind of suck. Now there's a couple of reasons why. So first off, are they just we influencing see at the beginning the of the new hope? At the beginning of a new hope, are part of Vader's, you know, legion, the five of first legion. Those were the original clones. Those were the original Jango Fett clones. That's why they're such good shots at the beginning of the movie, because that was Vader's fist, as it was called, or the 501st Legion, which were arguably the most badass Legion of clone troopers throughout the Clone Wars and in the Empire. Now, the reason why they're such bad shots later on in the movie is, well, for one, they were kind of told not to kill, you know, aside from plot, I mean, they were told not to fucking hurt anybody, just to intimidate them and scare them off because, you know, Vader and Tarkin comprised the plan to have a tracking beacon placed on the Millennium Falcon, which is why we can't, they kind of figure out where the Rebel base is at, you know, so wait, basically that kind of... Wait, wait a minute. Is that when the, is that when the spy shows up? No, that was, uh, that was, no, this was after when we get on Death Star, you know, you know basically when... You know That's what I'm dark. talking about, right? Yeah, the Imperial Spy, the one who looks like an elephant. Yeah, the ring, the ring. I love that guy. So basically, you know, they, um, yeah, so the Stormtroopers we see at the beginning of the movie are completely different from the uh, Stormtroopers we see in the rest of the movies. That's, so those were the, supposed to be the original clones, you know, the original Jango Fett clones. So yeah. honestly, because they're so iconic too, you know, and by the way, fun fact, there is an actual division in, you know, a certain mustache figure's army during World War II known as the Stormtroopers. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. In fact, a lot of the weapons that the Stormtroopers have are actually modified MG-42s and 43s. We got the big brain on Devlin. I like drone yeah. guns. Yeah, I'm kind of a World War II buff to scoop up to. All right, okay. Rebels, how are we thinking about the Rebel Alliance? Uh, <laughs> I like the fat guy that dies. Huh? <laughs> There's like the the fat guy that's a pilot, and he's <laughs> like, I can't get control of my my. You don't see the unfortunate part him. about him. You know what's the sad part about him? The fact that he doesn't die, but his name is fucking Porkins. That's his fucking name. That's so he's, they're already kind of making fun of him. You know, it's like, oh, what an unfortunate name. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, Rebels, I don't know. I, I want to put it at the bottom of A tier, because they are cool. You know, and they get a lot more... Yeah, I like the um, their canon beginning, and you know, the Rebels show, you know, and of course their expanded universe beginning with the Force Unleashed where the where Star Killer's family's crest is used as like the symbol of the Rebel Alliance. Because, you know, he in that universe, that timeline, he uh he basically helps with the creation of the Rebel Alliance by rescuing all his leaders, all this, you know, soon to be leaders from the Death Star from the Emperor after he sacrifices himself. By the way, Starkiller is still canon in my eyes. You know, but I still like Rebels. I still like that show. That's what Clone Wars. But yeah, I'm thinking bottom of the A tier. You know. But how are we all thinking about that? Any objections? Uh, no. Is it true that, that uh, Captain Rex is still alive? And is actually you know, a I, rebel soldier. There's a really cool head cannon that's kind of become popular that I think even Dave Filoni kind of agrees with. Is that you know at the um, during one section of Return of the Jedi we see like this grizzled old man with a beard, yeah. you know, like show up at the Battle of the Endor, Battle yeah. of Endor, you know, and Rex Rebel series looks just like him. So I, you know, but here's the one conflicting thing that hasn't been confirmed. You know, that I don't think it's canon. So, Rex, as we know, is a clone. 
as I mentioned earlier, clones have an accelerated aging process. So, physically, Rex should be like in his 70s or maybe in his 80s at the latest by this time. But, you know, so I don't think anyone can be of that age and still fight. Unless they're a Seth, because of course Palpatine's like in his fucking hundreds at this point. You know, but like, there's a theory that maybe he somehow stopped his accelerating aging process. But I don't think he can do that, because Kamino was one of the very few systems in the galaxy that had a cloning, you know, you know, system, like a cloning center. I know there were other ones, but they were very hard to find, and more often than not, they weren't very good or as advanced as the Kaminoans. So, honestly, you know, who knows? You know, maybe, you know, maybe he did somehow find a way to stop it. Maybe he did somehow find a way to find I don't know. I don't know, but it is kind of cool to think about, you know, but, um, that's just, that's how I view it, but, yeah. All right, um, Ewoks, how are we feeling about the Ewoks? Uh. I thought they were cute as a kid. Uh, Surprisingly, uh, they were pretty good warriors, but, you know. I just don't care about them that much. Much. Yeah, they kind of did leave a lot to be desired, honestly. I'm going to put them in here. I think like, the Wookiees are cooler. They are yeah. cooler. <laughs> Alright. So, um... Just for shits and giggles, we're going to... Let's do the Bounty Hunters. Let's do a Bounty here in episode 5. We already talked about Boba Fett, but let's do a boss. The uh, lizard guy. Uh, we're all putting... He's kind of kind of goofy. Kind of silly, kind of... Kind of goofy, kind of... You know, it's interesting. I'm not a Doctor Who fan, but I found a pretty cool piece of trivia that the outfit he wears is actually the exact same outfit that's worn in one episode of Doctor Who. You know, and like I said, I don't watch the show, so I don't remember exactly, but I was thought, oh, yeah, that's actually kind of cool. All right. Um, IG-88. Boss. Oh, my OG. favorite bounty hunter. I love him. He's great. He's, he's amazing. Yeah, he's really fucking cool. Okay. Um, Dengar. Is that the guy with the, like, wrapping around his head? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know much about him, but he's kind of cool. Alright. I don't remember the other one. He was, like, Creature from the Black Lagoon or something. But, um, okay. So, we're gonna put Bosk in B tier. Put Dengar in C tier. And then we're gonna put IG-88 at the bottom of the Wait, what about the, what about the dude that's, like, a robot fly thing? Yeah, that's the guy I was saying. I was like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. I don't know his name. But we're going to put him in B tier just because just I don't know where else to put him because I don't know who the fuck he is. Um, all right. I think that about covers it for the original trilogy, unless there was a, a side character I forgot. Uh, the Jawas. Uh... I don't play that much of an important role, so honestly, I can't put him anywhere. Uh... Oh, 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 Admiral Akbar. I forgot about him. Oh, yeah. Oh, we forgot about uh, the the black guy. Oh, Lando. Yeah, you know, yeah, let's do Akbar and Lando, and then we'll move on to the prequels. <laughs> okay, how are we feeling about Admiral Akbar? Where should we put him at? It's a trap. <sighs> That's all I have to say. He's pretty cool. I hate that he dies. Yeah. Well, like I said, we'll not talk about that with those movies. Let me get me started, because I'm already pissed off about that. By the way, did you know that scene made the actor really fucking depressed and he actually cried on set? Yeah, I don't blame him. When I'd, I'd be Admiral crying Akbar too. Akbar died? Yeah, when Admiral Akbar died in The Last Jedi, yeah, the actor was actually really fucking upset about it. You know, because Ryan Johnson doesn't give a fuck. You know, he's a fucking piece of shit. I mean, I like, I like his episodes of Breaking Bad, and I thought it was pretty okay, I guess. It was pretty good. But, yeah. Now, personally, um, I put Admiral Akbar near the bottom of A tier. Like, he's memorable, you know, even though he doesn't do too much, you know, but he, you know, he does, he is a very important figure in the Rebel Alliance. You know, he, he's been there since the very beginning. He moved all the way back in the Clone Wars. There before. He was there. Nine and none. What? The, the 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 racist Asian caricature alien from Star Wars Nine Num. Uh, oh, uh, I, I know who he's talking about. Yeah, like everybody calls him the Asian alien. Like, 
it's really bad how racist he looks like a, a like a japanese caricature from a 1940s u.s propaganda cartoon i don't know i don't know about this but we're talking about akbar now then we're gonna talk about lando oh yeah lando i think is like his i'm pretty sure nine nub is lando's second in command yeah so um yeah so i thought for i'm putting near the bottom oh. of it here what emma not to i do have to head out because i have to be at work at 7 a.m tomorrow morning all right well <laughs> see you later i guess Bye-bye. Bye. 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 All right. Okay. Um, any objections to my ranking of that Black Bar? Nah, he's pretty cool. What's his ranking? Okay. All right. I was on the phone with a customer. Moving on to Lando Calrissian. Where are we putting him at? Uh, I don't hate the That's, guy. I'd say he's like B or C. Honestly, he does some really cool stuff in the movies. Like he's in on Luke's plan. You know, he's <laughs> the only one who got into Jabba's palace without getting caught. That's pretty fucking impressive. And, you know, Luke even found it just like kind of just like just let himself get caught. But Lando was the only one who had to get in trouble. So that's pretty fucking impressive. And you know. Fucking, he was the one who blew up the Death Star at the end of Return of the Jedi. You know? I don't know. I'm big, so I don't know. Um, not big, so uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? The other guy. I don't know. I'm putting, like, I'm putting, um, Lando somewhere near, like, the middle of AT, because it's just the role he plays and how fucking badass he is. Oh, yeah, he sells out his friends. You know, in Empire Strikes Back, even though he didn't have much of a choice, but you know, I think he, you know, Billy D. Williams is such a charismatic actor. You know, also he did play Harvey Dent in the nineteen eighty nine Batman film, even though he wasn't Two Face really. You know, but um, I, I still want to put him in A tier because he was such a memorable character. You know, but uh, yeah. Any objection? I'm not. I'm not objecting him. He, I think he's pretty neat. I don't know too uh, much about him, but I think he's a good character. <laughs> all right, all right. So that covers up. That wraps up the original trilogy. Let's go on to the prequels. And uh, we'll, if you guys want, maybe we'll even do Clone Wars characters if you uh, like. I, I'm actually gonna go to bed, so we should save this for another podcast. What's that? So I gotta go to bed, so we should save this for another podcast. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it's been an hour and 30 minutes. So. Sheesh. This goes on for a little longer. Star Wars 1, 2, 3, I mean 4, 5, 6 portion of the ranking of the people. Sure yeah, like we'll subscribe. Yeah, pretty cool characters in the next podcast. Big you know. stinky. Big uh, stinky. We'll see you next time, Homelanders. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon. Yes, or we'll hunt you down and gut you like a fish. I uh, might, but I also might just, like, kiss your mom or something. Oh my just kidding. God. I don't want yeah, to that that podcast that I, don't take it down. I don't, <laughs> I don't want that last comment on the... <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> okay, All right, okay. Okay. Well, say bye, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. 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 B